you ever seen a dog tied up in a backyard, chains digging into its neck, ears flopped over with pieces missing, and a, a depressed expression on its face? You may have never realized it, but it is possible that this dog is part of a vicious, underground, multi-million dollar industry known as dog fighting. Dog fighting operations can be placed anywhere. No matter how rural or urban the community, they can make their fortune just about anywhere. I first came to be interested in dog fighting and how to stop it whenever I decided that I wanted to become a veterinarian. I remember being younger and hearing the judgmental talk about pit bulls, and I always wanted to be able to stop that. Though many people may be unaware that dog fighting is still a relevant and present issue, it does not change the fact that every year thousands of dogs are thrown into a ring and commanded to fight until death. And I am not willing to just sit around and let that happen. There are many misconceptions about the dog fighting industry, and today I hope to break down some of those misconceptions with true facts. Dog fighting first began in the 1750s in England and Ireland and spread to the US after becoming illegal in many countries. It was originally a source of entertainment for police officers and firefighters. There are three categories into which dog fighting can be classified street fighting, hobbyist fighting, and professional fighting. Street fighters participate in informal fights throughout the year. And these are on street corners, in back alleys, and on playgrounds. This type of fighting revolves around the idea of turf invasion. Hobbyist fightings are more structured because these dogs participate in multiple organized fights throughout the year. Breeders pay more attention to the health and care of these dogs because money-wise, they are more valuable. Professional fighters typically own an inordinate amount of animals, even upwards of 50 per person, and they're able to earn money through breeding, selling, and fighting their dogs. This type of fighting is typically the most intense because these dogs that do not perform well are executed. It is somewhat obvious to identify the types of dogs used in fights, but I'd like to tell you a little bit more about why some dogs are chosen over others. At the origin of dog fighting, dogs like the Old English Bulldogs and Bull and Terrier dogs were used. Unfortunately, these dogs are now extinct, partially due to their participation in dog fighting for so many years. Currently, dogs such as the American Pit Bull Terrier are used. This breed is the Americanized version of the bull baiting dogs. Baiting dogs simply meaning that these dogs are used to draw other dogs to fight inside the ring. Next, I would like to provide you with a few statistics about dog fighting. 32% of, of domestic abuse victims reportedly injure or kill a family pet. Florida and California tie for the most, reporting dog, most reported dog fighting cases. In 2007, approximately 250,000 dogs were reported to be used in dog fighting. Again in 2007, about 40,000 people were used in dog fighting, or were participating in dog fighting. <laughs> In conclusion, dog fighting is a real world, present time issue that many people are unaware of, so it is often an issue that is swept aside. Today I covered what dog fighting truly is, some of the dog breeds used, and statistics about the underground world of dog fighting. Dog fighting is not an issue that I am willing to sit around and let happen, and I hope today that I have informed you enough that you're willing to take a stand about it too.